Good afternoon. This is Wisconsin Rapids Human Resource Committee meeting, um, August 9th, 2022. Um, all members are present. Um, actually, why don't we just go around the room and introduce. Tom, you want to start, please? Tom Rome, District 4 Alderman, member of the committee. Dennis Pollock, 6th Ward Alderman. Patrick Delaney, committee member. Jay Bemke, committee chair. Shane Blazer, come here. Ryan Hartman, Human Resources. And a list of others in attendance will be on file in the clerk's office. We'll call the meeting to order at 1.33. Um, item number two is human resource updates. Um, a, current recruiting. Um, HR, police chief, crossing guards, and an engineering te technician. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ryan. Thank you, sir. Uh, where we are at uh, right now, <clears throat> we have filled the HR coordinator position, so the HR department is uh, currently full. Um, our new employee started yesterday. She's joining us in the audience today, so we are glad to have her and welcome her aboard. Moving on to the police chief, uh, CSS has posted the police chief position on their end. We have also posted it uh, on our end here at the city. Um, so that process will now be ongoing, and I believe the closure on that is September 15th, if I'm not mistaken. September 15th is the closure or deadline for those applications for the police chief. Uh, that went out and up uh, on social media last week. <clears throat> crossing guards, uh, we recently uh, just hired another crossing guard, so we are excited for that and, and thankful. Um, Always in need of crossing guards, be it in a uh, standby basis um, or as a replacement basis or on a permanent basis. Some of our crossing guards prefer to do just mornings or just afternoons or prefer to just be called in when uh, regular crossing guards are unable to make it for their scheduled shifts. So uh, again, kind of a, uh, always recruiting for crossing guards, but we have uh, hired um, a couple in the in, in recently and we're happy for that. Uh, engineering technician, we hope to be wrapping up the interview process by the end of this week for the engineering technician position. Uh, and along with that, we have uh, just wrapped up the position of operator at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so once that uh, will now go to the next stage of uh, offers, conditional offers and backgrounds, um, so with those positions of engineering technician and uh, operator, that will pretty much leave us with only a police chief opening for the first time in a long time. So that's the update as far as current recruiting goes. Any questions? Mayor, anything you want to add? Uh, okay, then we'll move on to item number three. That's the wage study update. And again, Mr. Hartman. Thank you again. <clears throat> just thought we'd take a little bit of time in a few minutes to kind of go over uh, just an update on the wage study. It's uh, obviously taken some time. It has been uh, a long process. We are uh, starting the final phases of that, but I just thought I would give a little background as to how the process has transpired um, from starting to the point we're at now. So our job uh, description qualification positions, those were all sent to Carlson Detman, uh, the consultant, uh, for the study at the end of August of 2021. Uh, what we've seen from that so far is that the city is very very competitive for the majority of our positions, which is a great thing. Um, since I've been here, and that is going on, I believe, two years this week or next week, uh, nobody has left the position, a position here at the city, due to higher wages. I am not aware of anybody leaving their position here to go somewhere else for higher wages. So, and if I'm wrong, I stand corrected, but I believe that to be the case. Uh, 
Another issue we saw is um, compression is a factor. Um, and, and what we mean by that is as, as in 2021 and the beginning of 2022, we're going also trying to ratify and bargain two contracts with police and fire. So as they get their increases, um, being what they are for years one, two, three, whatever it might be, and then you throw in the increase of a 3% COLA for all of our um, non-union permanent employees, we had to take the time to go back and rebalance that spreadsheet then of where everybody was, what they are, uh, are at now, and then look at where they fall comparatively. So when you're talking about compression, we're talking about maybe people at a certain level, but if they're getting paid overtime and weekends and double pay or triple pay, that type of thing, all of a sudden they get very, very close, or maybe they even make a little bit more at times than their immediate supervisor. Um, so we're trying to figure out ways to offset or alleviate that. So that um, going through that process of the, the two contracts along with the 3% COLA, we had to pause to rebalance everything. Um, another factor uh, is we are, we are actually on our third consultant um, since we started the process. Um, they're, they're very, very busy. Um, and again, these are not excuses. These are just facts and, and reasons. Uh, but we are on our third uh, consultant. And, and every consultant does things a little bit different. So one picks it up and says, oh, okay, they were looking at it from this point of view. I maybe prefer to look at it from this point of view. Let me tweak a couple things and I'll send it back. Um, the first draft that we received was in February of 2022. And we've received a couple different drafts between now and then. The last draft we received, I believe, to be on Ju July 11th of 2022. Okay. Uh, I think our ultimate goal with this wage study um, that will be most important for this committee and for the city council is to adopt a wage structure or a wage scale plan to have an effect not for just this year or in the next year, but kind of a plan going forward for multiple years, okay? Again, that then means we have to take into account, which is always a question, how are we gonna pay for it, <laughs> right? So you've got some individuals, again, the majority, we're very, very competitive. Uh, some will argue and say some of the positions are overpaid or out of market above above market um, not necessarily not necessarily a bad thing if we're recognizing longevity and the experience and the knowledge that they bring with those positions that's a great thing um, we also have a few that are under market that's where the cost factor comes in how quickly can we get them up to market and at what cost um, if going back to one other caveat I forgot about if if the HR committee and the council does not want to red circle anyone and red circling means you're basically frozen there until the market catches up to you um, nobody is ever a fan of that it's not a, a great talking point <laughs> it's because nobody wants to be told we're freezing your your pay until the market catches up to you um, if we don't want to do that, then how do we give them their increase without market, with them continuing to stay ahead of market? How do we get them to market, but yet they get some ability to grow? Because if you look, obviously, I'm sure we're all hit with the cost of inflation right now, which is growing a lot faster than a 25 or 3% COLA increase, right? So that, in talking with Carlson Detman, our... It's really a worker's workforce right now. It's not necessarily an employer's workforce. It's, it's the employees are driving. So that's gonna be a driving factor, they said for the next five years is what the consultant is seeing. So these costs are going to be all over the board over the next five years. Um, and that's just a, that's just a, a figure, um, an opinion that they, sh that they shared. Um, so again, I think our goal, or the committee's goal and, and the council, once it gets there, will be to adopt, looking at how to adopt a wage scale that will work for
for everybody. And, and the other caveat to that, and then I will wrap this up, we are also trying to get, years ago, Asset and the street department, they used to have their own wage scale. And then when they went after Act 10, and they didn't, but they kept their same um, basically wage structure, not within our current wage scale for all other non-union employees. So what we're doing with this model is also working on bringing uh, the asset and street department individuals into this wage scale structure as well so that this wage scale structure will reflect all non-union uh, permanent employees of the city of Wisconsin Rapids. So trying to get it under one umbrella on one spreadsheet, one formula, so that going forward everybody can see where they are and at what rates they'll grow. Um, I think that uh, is pretty much the topics that I wanted to cover and at this point I guess I'll entertain questions uh, if I didn't answer uh, or give you enough information already. Thank you. Committee, any questions? Patrick? Over the past year, there's been some combining of jobs into one job where one person has more responsibilities. Do you see that um, anywhere else that that could be utilized? As far as combining, combining more jobs? Yeah. Um, I think at this point, we're that, and ultimately that's probably, it is actually up to every department head um, to, to discover that and, and come up with those ideas and, and put forth that idea and plan. Um, never out of the realm of question. Uh, I'm not, I don't know of anybody or any position specifically where I would be looking to do that. Uh, but if, uh, you know, I, I know as the budget talks are ongoing, the department heads are always looking for ways to, you know, to make things happen if, if they can maybe share positions, share employees, and always bouncing around ideas. But I'm not aware of anything specific at, at the moment. Okay. Can I get a copy of the July 11th report? Your last oh, update. That can you, got. you get a copy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. Yeah, yep. Good questions. Any other questions? Want anything, Mayor? Okay, with that, we'll move. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to form a question. I don't know what time, <laughs> and I really haven't been able to yet. When we do get the final, I guess, what is the error? What's the intent of how we're going to proceed with that? Is it, do you know now yet? Or? I don't have a specific. Um, it'll be a proposal. And I'm thinking at first we would want to adopt the wage scale, the wage structure. Um, for instance, I think right now it's on a, an 11 step scale or current structure, but it's basically capped at step six. The new structure would move to a 16 step scale. 16? 16 step scale, but with lesser percentages at market get, and above market. So instead of getting, so you're, for instance, one, one idea that we're looking at and the cost factor is being researched now, if you're under market, you basically would grow at a 25 to 3% until you got to market. Above market, maybe would be a, half to a 1% up to a 1.5% increase going forward. But it would kind of spread out for 16 steps. Then that would help recognize longevity of employees because um, we definitely want to recognize the great employees we have that have been here for 20 to 30 years. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for that. So that would be, in my opinion, would be one of the big steps is adopting the structure. Step two then would be seeing where the, the dollar amounts fall into those positions. Um, that's where you know the cost factors are going to come in. We could have we could have been done this with this in all honesty a long long time ago had we taken the first draft we got and said here's here's what we're going to do and we're just going to take it and put it in because um, it's kind of boilerplate 
as far as what other municipalities do and look like. Uh, and in and talking with the mayor and 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 Jay, um, who else did we work with? Oh, finance director and city attorney. We're like this. This isn't. We don't feel right doing this. We want to. This is the first time this has been done, to my knowledge, that anybody can remember. So we're we're could be looking at over 15 years since the last one was done. Maybe I'm mistaken, uh, but I believe it's at least that long. So we want to make sure that every position we do is put in an appropriate place that employees are um, being paid fairly. Um, and, and right now the majority in a big snapshot picture, uh, the city of Wisconsin Rapids is doing a very good job at being competitive. The other decision, um, Tom, and it's a great question, will be more probably of a philosophical. Does the city of Wisconsin Rapids want to be a, a you know, kind of competitive in the wage market for for municipal employees? Do they want to be a leader in the wage market for municipal employees, or do they, you know, do, does the city not really, you know, care to be a competitor or a leader? And, and that's just a philosophical question. I would say right now we are borderline competitor slash leader, um, and I think that's a good thing in today's work um, search environment. Trying to get uh, good quality applicants in, I think being a uh, competitive leader is is a great place to be. But does that help answer your question at all? Or yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess you know before I uh, would want to jump in and say uh, that I agree and adopt to something or whatever. You know that I'd like to be able to see that thing first. Absolutely. I'd like not, I, you know I wouldn't want it put in front of me one day and then. Yep. Never having seen it, be expected to say, "Boy, I, this looks yep. great," and I, you know, I, I agree. I, I, I it may be that I would. No, it's if you. I, 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 if I need the time, I want to have the time to be able to do that. Absolutely, so. I would say it um, no less than a week ahead of time, maybe more if we can do it, um, would be more than fair because there's going to be a lot of questions, yeah. as there should be. I mean, we've been looking at this on and off since last August, and every time we look at it, it creates new questions and new answers and new information. And um, so, yeah, in all fairness, you would definitely wouldn't want to see it to make an informed decision ahead of time. Thank you. You bet. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I think it's going to start with a presentation of, of it and then a digestion period till the next meeting. And then, yeah, it wouldn't be... Uh, here, here it is, and now we need to vote on it, kind of thing, because it, it is a change, and and it needs serious consideration. And just to to finish off on that, if I may, um, we did invite uh, Patrick from Carlson Detman to present at this today. Unfortunately, he was he's on vacation; um, it was unable to. So, understandable because they are very, very busy right now. They are swamped. Um, but we did have, originally, we're like, okay, can he at least come do the presentation uh, for the month of August? But he was unavailable, and, and um, so that's where that's at. A great point um, from the mayor's perspective on that presentation will illustrate a lot. And then from there, you can have the information to digest and, and make a decision. Any other questions or comments? We will move on to item number four, discuss and consider for approval the revisions of the remote work policy, which I think everybody should have gotten a copy of, correct? Um, again, Ryan, you want to talk about this a little bit? Or? Thank you. Uh, yes, so for item number four, kind of actually piggybacks off of item number three. You might wonder how is that or why, but if we're not paying top dollar everywhere, one of the things that in the, the two years that I've worked here, one of the best things that our employees recognize to point is the flexibility in their work schedule, right? At time, flexibility, working with their department head, just being a, a great place to work might not make the most money, but we got great benefits and great good vacation and sick leave and personal leave and floaters. 
Um, and right now, we are seeing an edge uh, towards the other side with the actual the workforce itself. Um, and where I reiterated that the, the workers are kind of driving the workforce right now in the fact that remote work has become very, very popular. Um, so this, this plan, which COVID really forced many, many organizations into this plan or policy, so to speak, and overall, the workforce really, really likes it. We tested it for probably over a year, wouldn't you say, Mr. Mayor? Probably over a year we were doing it on and off based off of COVID. Um, and now it has become a strong recruiting and retention factor. Uh, we talk, when we go through these applicants and when I interview people, uh, or do a, do a phone screen before they even come in for the, the first one-on-one -on -one interview, sometimes we get asked the question, what's, what's the, um, is, there a, is there a remote uh, work from home option? Um, so that's where that's at. So at this point, we're, we're proposing um, revising our current policy where it was pretty much written on the premise of temporary status based on weather or pandemic. This, at the department head's discretion, would allow certain employees, based on their job and what the functions are, the ability to work from home based on, again, the department's needs, staffing, and uh, duties. You know, if they're a frontline person, probably not. But if they're back room, um, that recruiting and retention factor can be pretty good. So, yeah. Mayor? I'm about anti-work, remote work person. I have never supported it. I fought it tooth and nail. I, even during COVID, I wasn't a fan of it. And, but as I started talking to Ryan and staff a little bit more, um, I, there's definitely... Uh, we need to kind of get up with times on a remote work policy and through for recruitment for retention um, you know i think it's important that people are are in person at least a few days of the week um, so i th think that's a very important element but uh, yeah i'm i'm not a remote work kind of guy so <laughs> and every, everybody in staff knows that and but it, it's we to be competitive and to attract employees you know, there are jobs within the city that could be done remotely. However, I have I will not allow any remote work under, as long as I'm here, if it means closing down a department. I think a department needs to be open 8 to 4.30 with city hall hours. If, if some flexibility within that department to bail remote work and also have uh, the departments open, I, I can support that. Thank you. Committee, questions, Patrick? I'm actually a fan of the remote work because studies have shown that people actually work harder remotely than what they do coming in. Maybe because they're not standing at the coffee pot all day <laughs> visiting. Looking at me. So, um, just one part of this, employees are prohibited from using their own personal computers for work purposes. Um, can you explain the reasoning on that? You, no, I can. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's same with our, like our console phones. Once we start using our work, our home computers for work, they, they become open records requests. Um, most people have laptops already, so they would just take their laptop home with them. Okay, so you're saying that I can't use my personal computer to do any type of research? You can, anything. but it could be. So you shouldn't probably use your personal, well, you can if you want, but you can use your personal computer if you get counsel email and you want to respond to it, but potentially you open up your personal computer to open records requests. Um, and then your contents of your personal computer could be 
potentially part of that request. That would be interesting. Um, <laughs> we don't want. Okay, to. so <laughs> I, I'm not a permanent employee. And, and Sue might be online. She could probably explain it too. Yeah. Go ahead, Sue. I am. Um, and is, Ty is Tyler there? It's actually more of a technology and security and virtual private network question that we want. Um, you know, if people. Well, people are probably going to be getting into our network from their home, and that would be with a, uh, you know, a, a work computer. And uh, so we want, you know, everything to be safe and secure and them to use that way to access um, documents and such. And I guess, um, and, and like I said, Tyler, I think, can speak to this more than I in terms of the necessity of, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that if you're, if you're at home and you walk into another or you, you know, can pull up your webmail and you might read emails from your personal computer, but actually um, doing work and such, I think we would rather that, um, you know, it be through the VPN and, and, and such. But I guess if Tyler's there, he can talk to more of the... And, and the mayor is right about the, the open records, um, public records issue in terms of what device you're using to do uh, your work, and then possibly opening up, you know, that device uh, and that data to uh, public work, uh, public records requests, and so on. So it's best to, you know, try to keep those separate. But if if Tyler's there, he can he can speak to the technology part of it. He is not here. But you're you're right, okay. Sue. If I if I may, uh, this is Ryan again, Sue. But you, that's the what Tyler had mentioned to me earlier was more from a safety and security standpoint um, of getting a virus on a file of some sort from your home PC and right. then transferring it over into your work PC the next day or when you come into the office. It's just best and safest for our VPN and for Tyler the security programs that our firewalls run, um, just to be doing it all under city, um, city owned equipment. Okay, so you brought me into the equation here. You have an assessor as well who is a contractor who uses the network he comes in. Is he also prohibited from working at home on his equipment that he's purchased? And the software. Well, this would apply to employees, and I guess the relay, the you know, the technology in terms of what the assessor has and such. I think that's been worked out with the IT department to make sure that everything's secure there. And I'm sure they have an arrangement in terms of what what devices are being used and where and what the um, accessibility is. Um, so that would kind of be outside of this. Because the the kind the uh, assessor is uh, not an employee, but I know that there there has been uh, you know work done on you know determining what how best that that relationship works in terms of accessing data and so on. And I don't know offhand what what that is, but I know that it has been you know worked out, and um, our IT department is satisfied with the with the security and and what. How, how it uh, works right now. Tom, anything? Something. I somewhat probably come from the standpoint where the mayor comes from, I think, um, you know, that, uh, and I think if there, if it can be worked in and done um, fairly, but they, you know, it, I don't know that we're at the point that we can have people five days a week working from home. I don't know that we're there. I don't know that we'll ever be there. And I sure think that, and I agree that we have to have our departments that they're open, um, the certain hours that they're supposed to be, you know, if it's eight to four thirty or whatever we decide they are, that's what it has to be. Somebody has to be there. So, um, I can go along with this and you know if, if we find out that something isn't working uh, then we have to address that at that point in time and make changes so but if it's going to be left up to 
uh, department heads to see what they can do, if they can, uh, to go along. And uh, uh, if somebody can do that, it probably would be a, uh, advantageous for some people to come and work here if they um, could at least in some job maybe starting out a uh, younger one with a family or something that a uh, couple days or something three days to stay home or something that uh, uh, with the cost of daycare and all that stuff that you know it may be something that would be advantageous for somebody to uh, a benefit to, for somebody to come and work here so maybe that you'd get the uh, a very good employee uh, to apply to come here for a benefit like that. So um, I guess it's worth the we're worth the shot. But I think it's something that we're in the uh, people serving business, uh, serving the citizens of Wisconsin Rapids in the area, and that that uh, we have to have people uh, in the building here, you know. Um, and obviously, we have to have people. The guys out on the street crew. Uh, they're going to have to be on the street crew, so <laughs> <laughs> we haven't figured out a way yet to do that remote. I don't think so, unless we got the Jetsons or something coming in or something. I don't know. So, but uh, fire department, how do you guys feel about yeah. remote work? You uh, <laughs> went on that too. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. sure. That's something I think, you know, Chief, that you guys are in which, whichever crew or department, uh, if something comes up like that, you know, to adapt to something like that, I, I, w I wouldn't have any problem with that at all. That uh, you know, to contain the, in that case, the pandemic uh, virus going around or something. That's for sure to do something like that. So that'd be something I wouldn't even have. To, you wouldn't even have to ask for, as far as I'd be concerned. But let us know. That <laughs> so. Um, uh, and the, the other thing I think I agree with. I just want to comment. I guess is that uh, I think the. Um, The using of the personal, your personal computer is, I think, really a, is a no-no, I think. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it gets in, it's the, the technological thing and whatever, but I, I, you get into the, and the virus could be there or whatever, to, what could go along with that, but I, the, and, and I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> far, far from it. Um, I've sat with them many times, but uh, anyway, uh, that, uh, it gets into the point of, um, and it's been mentioned uh, a little bit here, is that uh, if things, if uh, if whoever would find that your personal computer has been used for something, to my knowledge anyway, that opens your entire personal computer up, the entire computer, not just that, but they can look through your whole system for how many years and decades it may go back and whoever you've been in contact with or whatever that it be open to the public so um, that's why I'd be really um, leery about uh, getting into using a personal computer for the uh, city business um, it wasn't one of our favorite things when we went to the computers to start with, uh, for some of us aldermen anyway, but uh, we're here and we have it, so uh, we're using it to the best of our ability. So, Thank you. Thank you. And guys, uh, this, this is Tyler. I can kind of touch on, I, I heard some of the conversation. I can kind of touch on some of that if needed um, for the personal computer uh, IT policy. Yep, go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, so really it's it's a, a factor that I can't um, 
I can't verify that any one individual computer is safe to be on our network, um, so to be conducting work uh, from a personal computer to our network, um, even if that's, you know, accessing a file, um, saving a file and sharing it, I can't um, then say, hey, this is a safe file or this is, you know, a safe connection, um, whereas I'm responsible and I'm able to make sure that all of our domain computers are adhering to safety practices, you know, getting updates, getting patches, all that good stuff, have proper antivirus installed. Um, so that's more or less um, the reason behind it. Um, that's also outlined in our, eight, our IT uh, policy handbook. Uh, so it's just echoed in this policy as well, just to kind of drive it home that even if you're, remo or you're working home remotely, uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, we can open the Pandora's box up to use personal equipment. Any questions for Tyler? Nothing. I guess I'll just throw my two cents in. I've been a big supporter of this, I guess, since we've done this um, through the COVID stuff. Um, I think it's important that we do have the ability to attract and retain talent and employees. And I believe Wood County has already adopted a policy. And Portage County, did Portage County? Okay. Okay, so it looks like probably this is just the way everybody's headed. So, um, any more discussion? If not, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the remote work policy. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Um. I think before we go on to adjournment, meeting dates, second Tuesday of the month, September 12th, if that works, at 1.30. And then possibly we can get Carlson in for that. Mm -hmm. That's a Tuesday, isn't it? 13th is? Okay. 13th? Yep. Thirteenth. Yep. Does that work, Patrick? Tom. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. September thirteenth at one thirty. Um, good. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, meetings adjourned at. Thank you.